Tonight on LA Late, we take you through the new federal administration. Then later, an update on the latest developments in the fight to legalize marijuana. Then finally, stick around for an extra special debate, moderated by our very own Terry Hansen Cook. And now, ladies and gentlemen, because we have nothing better to do, it's time to start the show. Hey, what's up, America? Welcome to LA Late, DC on THC. I'm your host, Terry Hansen Cook. I'm here to give you all the chillest possible dose of your regular terror inducing news feed. Let's get to that, shall we? Apparently, apparently, sometime last week or month or something, President Trump's national security dude. Mike Flynn got canned because he was having secret meetings with some dudes from Russia. See? Trump's creating jobs already, folks, just like he promised. Mike Flynn used to be a big muckety-muck in the Army a, a while back, but Obama fired his butt for insubordination. Man, this fool can just not seem to keep a, a job down. So anyway, the guy in charge of telling the president how to keep the country safe was gabbing with some Russian government employee named Sergei Kislyak. I didn't even know they knighted dudes in Russia. I thought you needed a queen to do that. And to a guy named Gay? How progressive. Flynn allegedly spoke on the phone with this Sir Gay about some killer sanctions Obama sicked on Russia because Russia invaded Ukraine. Flynn claimed to not have taken part in the calls, but then he said the calls may have happened, but he didn't remember what was discussed. Then later, he said that while he still didn't remember anything that was discussed, he did remember that sanctions were definitely not discussed. Then, even later still, the NSA revealed the transcripts of the phone calls that showed he did indeed discuss the sanction with this lackey of Vladimir Putin. Maybe a reason this guy keeps getting fired is because he can't remember a damn thing. Anyway, this Sir Gay dude also ended up having secret meetings with a guy Trump chose to be his top lawyer, a dude from Gump Country down in Alabama by the name of Jefferson Beauregard Sessions. He goes by Jeff when he needs to distance himself from the Confederate president after whom he is named. For example, when he's hanging out at the Birmingham Country Club, he goes by Jefferson. When talking to a representative from the NAACP, he probably goes by Jeff. When he's not talking to gay Russian knights or making cookies with the rest of the Keebler elves, Jefferson usually spends most of his time trying to dismantle civil rights laws as one of Alabama's two senators. As the president's top lawyer, though, he can just decide to not enforce the existing civil rights laws at all. Whoa, not to be outdone by Trump, Jefferson is also trying to get people back to work. Did you hear that, Ferdinand? With Sessions in charge of the law, I don't think it would be a surprise to anyone to see him to try to get good old Jim Crow back to work. While we're on the subject of ignoring the will of the people, Sessions has no intentions of continuing the Obama administration's blind eye marijuana policy. In other words, he might use the power of the federal government to crack down on marijuana use in this country, even in states where it's been legalized. Can you believe this fool, Ferdinand? He's going to put me in jail for smoking a joint while him and Mike Flynn are out there committing fraud 
with a side of treason. It's a major bummer, man. On a brighter note, both of Trump's wacko cuckoo bird Muslim bans got struck down by federal courts. The first one, whoa, was overturned by a judge in Seattle, Washington. Go Seahawks! The second draft of the ban was struck down by a judge in Honolulu, Hawaii. Whoa. Supporters of the ban claim those in distant Hawaii don't understand the ever-present danger and fear of random bombings. To which Hawaii responded, uh, duh, December 7th, 1941, a day that was supposed to live in infamy. Of course, that's a reference to the attack on Pearl Harbor that launched the United States into the Second World War. Right, Ferdinand? Apparently, infamy's only about three quarters of a century. But hey, we're cool with Japan now, so don't any of you fools ever think there's no hope for our current regrettable situation. Speaking of regrettable situations, the Republican-controlled Congress is working hard to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, and put the Paul Ryan penned American Health Care Act. This new bill would result in the loss of health insurance for roughly 24 million American citizens, an increase in deductibles and premiums for the poor and elderly, and will save the country around $300 billion over 10 years, which amounts to about $30 billion a year. Whoa! The good news is that almost everyone hates this bill. Medical associations oppose it because of the millions who would lose their coverage. The AARP opposes it because it will raise premiums and weaken Medicare. The Democrats all oppose it because of both of those reasons and more. Moderate Republicans oppose it because they see it as too draconian. And conservative Republicans oppose it because it still looks too much like Obamacare. Basically, the only people who like this thing are Trump and Paul Ryan. Anyway, to sum up Tr Trump's presidency so far, Ferdinand, one, both of his Muslim bans have been struck down. Two, evidence is mounting of an alliance between the Russian government and the Trump presidential campaign. Three, Donald Trump supports legislation that will eliminate health care for 24 million Americans, mostly poor and elderly. We could have avoided this, but apparently some people thought the grandma with four decades of government service under her belt wasn't up to the task. And finally, this Keebler elf is going to lock me up for munching on my own special cookies. That is, unless he gets locked up first. We are only two months into this, folks, and we just got under four years to go. So I recommend we kick back, twist up a joint, order a pizza, and get prepared for the long haul. It's going to be a bumpy ride. When we return, we're going to dive right into the state of marijuana in America today. So stick around. We'll be right back. So, Sarah, what's going on here? Sarah? Sarah? She won't answer you. Or she can't. Why not? This is the way it's been since she started smoking pot. She's all lazy and boring and... You know, we used to have so much fun together. And now? This is what we do. What's wrong with you? Tonsillitis? Appendicitis. Yes! <laughs> Nobody's died of tonsillitis around here for a while. Appendicitis. Nothing to worry about. Scalpel? What if the joint were in somebody else's hand? Like your surgeon, your lawyer, or your local policeman? Would you still say marijuana is harmless? No. No. Let's see if I can still make a straight line. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past 20 years, you might have noticed that marijuana legalization has been steadily becoming an acceptable concept to numerous states in the country. As of today, 29 states in the Union have voted to legalize medical marijuana. Eight of those 29 have also passed legislation allowing for the recreational sale and use of marijuana. Why don't we take a minute and dive into the history of weed legalization? California was the first state in the Union to take a chance on weed. The voters in the Golden State voted to approve Proposition 215 back in 1996 to legalize and regulate the use and sale of medical marijuana. Washington, Oregon, and Alaska followed suit two years later. By 2010, a total of 13 states across the country voted to allow citizens to use medical marijuana to treat their ailments. Then in 2012, while the rest of the country was choosing another four years of president, I found bin Laden and shot his ass, instead of four years of that one guy who stuck the family dog on the roof of the car before a long ass road trip, voters in the states of Washington and Colorado decided to vote in favor of the nation's first recreational marijuana bills. They were the first states to allow the creation of marketplaces that could legally sell marijuana to adults 21 and over with valid identification, much like your average liquor store. And in the years since, with two national elections having come and gone, the states of Oregon, Nevada, California, Alaska, Maine, Massachusetts, and Washington, D.C. have been added to the list. A 2016 Gallup poll showed that 60% of Americans support legalizing recreational weed. It's no wonder people are starting to get on board with legalization because it helps America get their hands on that green stuff they love so much. No, not a fat sack of grass, a fat stack of cash. By and large, legal weed has resulted in a substantial windfall for the states that have opted for full recreational legalization. Let's look at Colorado, the first state to get their weed laws and marketplaces set up. By regulating and taxing this fine drug, Colorado has raked in $200 million of tax revenue off the sale of over a billion dollars in legal weed. It's been just over three years since the nation's first pot shop opened in Denver and in that time, this awesome little plant has already become a multi-million dollar a year industry with more and more growth every year. Apparently, those non-recreational states have decided their government programs don't need any more funding. Can they really have no need for an extra couple hundred million dollars a year? Surely Michigan could use a budget boost. Putting green into their stores might help take the green out of the water. Mississippi is clearly afraid that if they legalize recreational weed, they might lose their coveted position as poorest state in the country. Kentucky doesn't realize that the loss in bourbon sales will get more than made up for the new skyrocketing demand for fried chicken. Now, just like any other movement, there's usually some opposition bent on slowing down progress. Right now, that opposition is personified by the head of Trump's Justin De Justice Department, Mr. Jefferson Beauregard Sessions. Sessions made his views on weed clear when he said that weed was a drug that was almost as dangerous as heroin. This is the country's highest ranking lawyer, saying a drug that has killed, I don't know, no one, is almost as bad as a drug that kills over 10,000 Americans every year. The Attorney General once joked that he was okay with the KKK until he found out they smoked pot. As I said earlier, this man has no interest in continuing the Obama-era attitude of ambivalence toward the potheads. He's made it very clear that he does not intend to make things easy for us. It really makes you wonder why this dude has such a bone to pick with stoners. 
If I had to guess, it's because one night after smoking a fat blunt, two roadies for Willie Nelson went and ate all the cookies that Jeff Sessions and the other Keebler elves had made that day. Sessions vowed that from that day forward, he would not rest until he had his vengeance. I might have been worried about this dude, but the fact that he might get indicted for perjury in the near future makes me think we don't have to pay much attention to this angry little cookie elf. But don't you all forget the good folk that have been fighting the good fight. President Obama has gone on record mentioning how he'd prefer this country move toward decriminalization. That's right, Ferdinand. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley has stated he fully supports his state's move toward legalization. Bernie Sanders firmly believes the war on drug is a failed policy that needs to be addressed. This movement is winning minds and gaining ground. I think now more than ever, the prospect of national weed legalization is in our future. That's the dream anyway. After the break, I'll be speaking with a couple of candidates from my local city council. So stick around. We'll be right back. It's yours? No, I... Mother said she found it in your closet. I don't know. One of the guys must have... Must have what? Look, Dad, it's Where not... Where did you get it? Dad, Answer I... me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. Hello, my name's Penny. I think people shouldn't do drugs. They can make you forget things, like which animals have have stripes. And your body might um, get clumsier, so it can't jump rope as good. Drugs can get you in big trouble. You could go to principal's office or go to jail. Then you can't watch TV or eat pizza. Recess is good. Hamsters are good. Birthday parties are real good. Birthday parties are real good. Birthday parties are real good. Birthday parties are real, 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 real good, all good. Drugs are bad. I wouldn't do drugs. Welcome back to the show, folks. Tonight, I have the pleasure of moderating a debate between two of the three candidates running for my districts representing the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, respectively, is Theodore Chatfield and Tyler Chatfield. Sadly, the incumbent, Cindy Lou Who, was unable to make it tonight. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. So I'd figured I'd ask you gentlemen some questions and to a degree moderate what I hope will be a healthy, lively, and spirited debate. My first question is for Theodore. What is your response to the current FBI investigation of Donald Trump's presidential campaign and its connections to the Russian government? Well, as a typical Republican, I want to make sure it is known that I do not support the recent actions of the Russian government. What they did was tantamount to an act of war. Under usual circumstances, and as a Republican, I would be obligated to loudly declare my desire to strike back at Russia. But this time, they screwed Hillary and helped my party win the presidency. So I guess my response is, eh. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even though once upon a time, back in the Reagan days, we Republicans were the guys funneling rockets to Osama bin Laden and the Mujahideen to try to help get the Ruskies out of Afghanistan. We were the ones telling them to tear down, tear down walls. But for whatever reason, I see my fellow American Democrats as a bigger, bigger threat than the Russians. So screw it. Let them hack. Tyler, your rebuttal. Well, as a typical Democrat, I feel we have been attacked. I think the Russians and the Trump campaign were working together to destroy Hillary's campaign. As such, I demand 
that the election results be voided on the grounds of tampering and colluding with a hostile foreign government. There should be a new vote and a new inauguration in the hope that we can rewrite the wrongs of the past five months. But since Democrats hold virtually no power, our demands aren't taken very seriously. We Democrats would probably be doing a better job probing and investigating these treasonous acts if it weren't for the fact that we can't seem to stop arguing with one another about Bernie's treatment during the primaries. I'd like to remind everyone there's bigger fish to fry right now. We need to squash this beef and move on to getting rid of that big Putin-loving cheese doodle. My second question will be for Tyler. Mr. Chatfield, how do you feel about the heroin epidemic that has spread throughout the country? Well, I feel we need to stop looking at the issue through the crime lens and start looking at it through the lens of public health. We should be investing in drug rehabilitation clinics rather than throwing these people in our already overcrowded prisons. Additionally, sure. we need to start paying more attention to these pharmaceutical companies who are trying to do whatever they can to sell as many opioids as they can. Average citizens are getting pumped full of Percocets and Oxys and Vicodin, and once they're hooked, they find that their prescription has run out. So they break a finger or a toe to get a new script. Then one day, they find that they can't quite afford the pills anymore. In walks in the much, much cheaper and very, very similar heroin. And just like that, you have a nation of addicts. And I think we should be putting them in rehab and helping them get their lives back together rather than throwing them in a prison cell to rot. Theodore, your rebuttal. There is a heroin epidemic in America because America has become an immoral cesspool. Sin and excess are the hallmarks of today's America. The moral decay of this great nation over the past eight years has been most alarming. I mean, what genius thought it would be a good idea to acknowledge that trans people are a thing? I was doing just fine merely thinking of them in the same way I think about Bigfoot. You know, people say they exist, but I've never really seen one in person. This heroin crisis is no different than the trans crisis. It all comes down to personal moral fiber. We people of the Republican Party are strong believers in self-responsibility, keeping your affairs in order, carrying your own weight, sticking to your principles. What these heroin addicts need is a lesson in actions and consequences, a concept that I feel has been lost in America today, the concept that your actions have consequences. So when we toss these junkies in the slammer, the youth of today will know why they should avoid that trash, and why they should stay on the path of righteousness, the moral path, the Republican path. And for the final question, we'll flip a coin to see who gets to go first. Tyler will be heads, and Theodore will be tails. Tails, Theodore will go first. Theodore? How do you feel about the success of marijuana legalization in America so far? I'll admit, Terry, I am rather torn on the issue. I'm having very conflicting feelings. My moral conservative side absolutely puckers at the idea of degenerates toking up with impunity. But my capitalism-loving, liber liberating, pro-business side thinks a billion dollars in revenue in three years in Colorado alone is absolutely orgasmic. I couldn't even describe the feeling when you add up the revenue from the rest of the states. The feeling is just, it's so amazing. I can just truly blow a great big pro-business load all over the place. I wish I could reconcile these opposing feelings, but I think the only way that it, that would be possible is if somehow the states legalized the sale of weed, but kept the part about being able to arrest potheads. In essence, people could buy it as much as they wanted, so to satisfy my love of commerce and free enterprise, but if they caught, got caught doing anything funny with it, I can still throw them in the slammer to satisfy my love of messing with hippies. It'll never happen, but a man can dream, right? Tyler, your thoughts. I think the progress this country has made on weed legalization is something worth celebrating. This country is slowly starting to accept that weed is not dangerous, and it is better that we make some money off of it rather than the cartels. 
the old reefer madness scare tactics don't work anymore. This country could start to undo some of the wrongs it has imposed on those whose lives were destroyed by prison sentences for the crime of merely smoking a joint. And like my opponent, I too am excited about the growth in the industry so far. More sales means more tax dollars, and more tax dollars means more funding for education and infrastructure maintenance. 200 million tax dollars collected over three years in Colorado. That's going to buy a lot of school breakfast programs, parks department events, fire trucks, squad cars, more investment in public transportation to help the poor get to work. So with increased tax revenue, fewer people in jail, and more people free to twist up a fatty and kick back, I'd say the future is bright for cannabis enthusiasts in America. Gentlemen, I'll give you each a few more seconds to sum up your campaign messages. Tyler? Join me and the Democrats in the fight for truth and justice. Democrats love to say they fight for all the just causes, mostly because they're really bad at actually getting anything done. But at least we can sleep at night. Theodore. Join me and the Republicans in the fight for the soul of this great nation. Help me fight against those who seek to erode the moral foundation of this great land. Join me as we battle against forces that seek to test our values, morals, and principles. We must do whatever we can to resist these forces. Unless these forces are only targeting the Democrats. Then they're fine, I guess. Gentlemen, I truly appreciate you for joining me today. I wish you luck in the upcoming election. And that's all the time we have for LA Late DC on THC this evening. I want to thank you all for tuning in, and I hope to see you next week when LA Late tackles the bongs versus blunts argument and has a frank conversation about weed strains with Barry, the guy from the local dispensary. Join us, won't you? I think that was good. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely.